Morning boys and girls, it's Saturday the 30th of August 2014. I keep thinking it's like September, I don't know why I keep thinking it's September. Do you think it's September? Why do I think it's September all the time? We're not there yet, are we? I'm, I'm falling ahead of myself. Although you would have thought that due to the weather over the last few days. It's been quite, quite cold last week, but it has now warmed up. So warmed up, in fact, that I've been able to tend to things in the garden, boys and girls. I've been buying loads of bulbs, actually. You know, there's a little, little demonstration at the moment on special offer in home base. Buy two, get one three, boys and girls, on various different bulbs. They've got great big bags of things. Um, the thing is, I've, 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 I've bought, like, bags. Oh, let's say good morning to Terry. Good morning, Terry. All is well. All is... Uh, am, I, am I a little bit tall for the, for the camera? Am I a bit tall? Just a minute. Let me just move that up a tiny little bit there. I think, I think I'm hitting the top of the camera, aren't I? Sorry. Uh, yeah. So they've got three for two on various different types of bulbs at the moment in home base. If you're that way inclined, perhaps you haven't got a garden. You know, a little, little box. Of... Oh, some... I can't believe there's someone at the door now. Oh, just a second. Can you stay there a minute? Dear me. Honestly, now you know who that was. Right, they keep putting these bloody stupid little magazines through my door. Clean easy. Have you heard of them? And it's got, like, it's like full of like, I suppose, you know, some people might find them useless. Like various different ways of cutting potatoes or cleaning things and all that. And they keep putting this, and there's a sign on the door that says no visitors, you know the sort of sign, no newspapers, no visitors, unless they're delivering something, no religious people knocking on my bloody door, every f no blooming sky installers, no double glazed people trying to sell me double, it amazes me, when they knock on the door and they try to sell you double glazed, I said have you looked at the bloody windows, are you blind, you know, where's your guide dog, why do they do that? So I've got a sign on my door saying, please don't knock. And yet they still leave their crap. He wants his clean, easy book. And I said, well, I don't know where it is, mate. He said, I'll leave it on the door. Well, I'll tell you where it is. It's in the recycling bin. Don't post things through my letterbox that are unwanted. Thank you very much. Read the signs. What is wrong with these people? Yes, good morning, Terry H. I'm very well indeed, Terry. Yes, very happy. And um, happy to be here today. Especially I've been, to, I've been, the throat is better. OK, that gland thing is almost down now. Not quite. I don't think it will ever go down completely. OK, um, but it, it is it is much further down than it has been doing so recently. So I'm quite pleased about that. The feet, the right foot now is almost no problem whatsoever. So after 18, just a mental arithmetic now. Um, six, seven, eight, seven, twelve. Seven, seven. After twenty months, twenty months, the right foot appears to have sorted itself out. The left foot is going up and down like a yo-yo. Sometimes it's okay, other times it's not. Now I did quite a bit of digging in the garden. Now I wasn't burying bodies. Oh, before, before you all start ringing the police up and saying, oh, you better go around Chris Reardon's house, there are bodies buried in the garden. Well, there is a couple of bodies, I lie. There is a couple of bodies buried in my garden, two cats. One uh, was uh, J... No, let me think. Was it JD? No, it wasn't. No, one is Tiny's Ashes and one is uh, Maddie. Uh, that was my... Um, best mate's cat. Oh, it was a beautiful black cat, that was. It was. 
and she's buried in my garden. So there are two bodies buried. In, I mean, ring up the police if you want. Go around to Chris Ridden's house. He's got two cats buried in his garden. You must exhume them. You must exhume them for physical examination of, you know, uh, cat abuse or something like that. Let me say I'm sad who actually rings up now. You know that. There will be some sad who rings up. So that was Ronnie's case. Talking of Ronnie, can I ask? Now, who is it? And every time, and it, there's, there's a couple of people, every time Ronnie makes an appearance on one of my videos, someone clicks the dislike button. Okay? So who is that? Come on. Don't hide behind your little computer screen saying nothing. Come on. Are you brave enough or are you coward? Are you coward that hits that little dislike button? Who is that? Who's doing Who's Who's disliking my best friend? <laughs> well, I hate him as well, to be honest. I do. I popped over there last night. He's sitting there with a boyfriend. And he's got no, no T-shirt on. He's sitting there topless. It's not a nice sight, dear. It really is. Is my face all blue today? I think it's all blue. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I've got another shirt on. I've got a nice red shirt on today because shock horror. While um, I was sitting there last night uh, with with Ronnie and his boyfriend for, for about an hour, half an hour, I, I, you know, I popped over there for because I was off last night, and I popped up there for about half an hour, and I, I, I honestly can't sit with him for any longer than that because you go in there and he starts. <laughs> Talk, 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 talk. And I'm thinking, shut up, I'm watching the bloody television, dear. Oh. You know, if you want to talk at yourself, do a talk show like I'm doing. Then you can sit away and chat to your heart's content and no one watches. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you can still just sit there and chat. What was it? I can't remember what he was moaning about last night. He's ordered, he's got some doors. He says they're walnut doors. I said, "All right." I said, "Are they? Are they? Are they walnut or are they walnut veneer?" Because there's a lot of difference between that, dear. A lot of difference. He said, "Oh no, they're walnut." So I looked at them. I said, "They're not walnut. They're walnut veneer," which means it's like that mashed-up wood underneath it. What's that called? Chipboard or whatever it is. And they put a veneer of walnut on it. That's what he's bought. Quite expensive, though. I think they were about. He bought three for about 450 quid because he wants to change the doors in his house now. I mean, what have you got to change doors for? Please tell me. You know, a door is a door. It opens, it closes. That's it. Why do you have to change your doors? Don't understand that at all. I look all right. You know, they're OK. But I just think that's £450 wasted on a few doors. <clears throat> He has to have it. And, and yesterday, what else did he buy? He bought some vases yesterday. Not va well, they were vases. Great big things. 25 quid each, dear. But he had vases. He said to me the other day, he said, why don't you get some nice pots for your plants that are in the house? And I said, well, they're in pots. Yeah, why don't you get some nice ones? What's the difference? Let me just show you. Let me get one. One moment, please. Excuse me. I'm in and out of this room today like Miss... Well, well. Now, this is one of my homegrown spider plants. OK, those of you uh, that haven't spent the money and are without vision, let me just explain to you. I'm now holding a pot with a spider plant. I'm like David Bellamy. Hello, where have you gone? Oh, there you are. Right. So spider plants and it is in a pot. OK, pot looks all right to me. You put the plant in the pot, a bit more earth and water it. What's the problem? Oh, why don't you get some nice pots? Nothing wrong with those ones. Bloody wasting money all the time. Does annoy me, it really does. Um, and, and, and that's it. So uh, when I was doing the gardening and I was doing a lot of digging because I bought a load of shrubs, I quite, quite, spent a bit of money this week on a load of shrubs. Um, I didn't actually video doing it. I thought, oh, I can't, I can't be bothered to get the camera out today. So I just got on with it. And I must have been digging. I dug up all the potatoes and um, uh, then I put these plants in and I must have been digging for about, and, and it, it turned over all the earth as well. It was about two and a half hours altogether. Oh, my foot didn't half hurt after that. 
It was hard work. I did manual labour for about two and a half hours, boys and girls, and it nearly killed me. I can't lie to you, it nearly killed me doing the manual labour. So the foot, as I say, the throat's gone down, the foot goes, that left one goes up and down a bit. It's okay today, it hasn't been a problem so far today. So, so we live in hope that one day my foot may be better again. The left ones, because the right one is already sorted out. Terry H says, thanks for your list of ailments. You know what's good for a sore throat, don't you, dear? What, fisherman's friend? Have you got one? Send him down. <laughs> fisherman, have you had a fisherman's friend? Oh, they're horrible things. Oh, they're ever so strong. Now, there is a way of communicating with me today, boys and girls. If you're watching the show live, OK, uh, you're with us live. And if it's now um, <clears throat> just coming up to a quarter past 12 on Saturday, the 30th of August, 2014, then you can, I can't. Where's my thing? There it is. Then you can indeed join us live um, by using Skype. OK, I'm just trying to find where the. Um, there it is. Just click something there. That's it. OK, you can join in by Skype by using uh, by using the username Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK, that's my Skype in number. Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. All one word. That's the Skype in. All right. Send us a Skype and you could talk to us live on air. How exciting is that? I mean, it really is exciting. And I've got a couple of little bits and pieces for you to talk about, which I shall come on to in a minute. Or you can talk about anything else you want to. If you can't get on Skype, there is a local London phone number. And that local London phone number is 020 8133 6 Three five eight. Terry, when's the last time you called in? It's about time you said hello to me, wouldn't it? O two O eight one double three six three five eight. Should I just sit here and wait for your calls? Okay, I'm going to sit here now. Thank you. Nothing coming in yet. No, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I can't, <laughs> I can't shut up for more than two minutes at a time. You know that. Now, one of the things. I'd like you to um, chat to you about this morning. Oh, just talking about the Skype there. Angel sent in, sent in an emergency email last week. In an emergency email, which says, Hi, Chris. I tried to install... Angel seems to be having trouble with her computer at the moment. Angel says, I tried to install Skype onto my computer so I could work... So I could interact with you on Saturday. But it wouldn't work, and I don't know why. And that's, that's not the only thing that's wrong with her computer. She also says, I still haven't worked out why I can't see your videos. or what, Sorry, why I can't see videos that are all posted on Facebook. I have updated Flash Player and Java. I even deleted and reinstalled my browser. I looked at all settings on my computer, but still can't find out what's wrong. Anyone got any ideas on that? All right, so once again, um, she tried to install Skype, but that won't work. And she, this has been going on for some weeks now, she can't see videos that are posted on Facebook. Can you, <coughs> can you see YouTube videos? That, that's the thing, Angel. Can you see, can you, I mean, obviously you, you must be watching this show, I would guess. But can you see other YouTube videos? Do let us know. Or is it simply only things within Facebook? Bit more information. And our, uh, our, our, our friends and loyal viewers and listeners may be able to help you with your inquiry caller. Thanks for calling. You are held in a queue and will be answered as soon as a customer services representative is available. Thank you for calling. Hey, eh? why can't she see videos within Facebook? Someone must know the answer to that. Carl might know it. Any ideas, Carl? Carl in Yorkshire. Duh, 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 duh. He's quite good at that sort of thing. <coughs> Email address, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk 
An angel also saw my little video or, or talking about my garden this week, and I did post a picture. I don't think I've got it here. No, I haven't got it on this. Have I got it on this computer? No, I don't think I have. No, you'll have to look for the video um, this week. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday's video, and I did a picture of what I what I'd done in it, or what I'd started to do in the garden. An angel saw this. She said, good layout. Have you put the tallest at the back and the shortest at the front? Yes, I did. I checked those measurements. I checked the measurements, angel. Yes. Are the plants, although, you know, looking at them at the moment, some of the front ones look bigger than the back ones. But that's, that's just how they are at the moment. They will grow. I checked what they will grow to. Um... Are the plants at the back climbing plants? No. Uh, if you look at the picture again, the back fence is already covered in a plant which is spreading right across now. That is a passion flower. Now, you might remember at, um, a few weeks ago I told you that all these buds had appeared on the passion flower. Right? And I was waiting for them to open... As it turned out, I didn't get many flowers. The buds were there, but there was nothing underneath them. Anyone know why that is? Isn't that strange? So I got a few flowers, which were very beautiful, but not many. A bit disappointed with that. But that plant is, is stretching right the way along there. There's, there's also ivies and some spiky things around the back to stop evil, evil people trying to break into the studio and taking over the show with its millions of listeners. It really is. So thank you very much for that, Angel. Um, those ones right at the back were hibiscus, I think they were. They're almost like little trees, hibiscus. Terry says, uh, uh, I don't know. <coughs> I know it's been a long time. I will try and ring in soon. Oh, it's that old one. I'll do it tomorrow. Terry. Oh, dear. <sighs> do you know anything about this open register? Received a letter from the council today saying there is now an open register as well as an ele electoral register that anyone can buy your details. Now, I don't know what that is. Uh, there should be, um, you know, when you sign up for your voting, you get this thing from the council every year, don't you? And I think that's to do with the electoral register. And there will be a box there somewhere to tick saying that you don't want to go on. It could, it could actually, actually, it could well be the open register. So I'm not quite sure. You tick a box. You need to tick a box or untick a box so that you're not on the open register. OK. All right, Terry. Um, nephew Jimmy Butler is not on the electoral register, but he will be soon when he is 18. He will be able to vote. Who will he vote for? Maybe Uncle Chris should become a politician. Oh, Yes. What do you think of that idea? Could I be a politician? Free sweets for everyone. That's what we want. Free sweets. And, you know, um, perhaps at Christmas time, as a politician and members that sign up for me, they could get a little gift for me at Christmas. Maybe a little box set of my shows to enjoy over the Christmas period. Alongside box sets of Dad's Army. So Jimmy Butler is with us this morning, not in the flesh, unfortunately. Wasn't that exciting last week, boys and girls, when I was just sitting here and I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. And it was nephew Jimmy Butler. You may have seen our Ice Bucket Challenge on Monday, where uh, Ronnie's nephews were here as well, and they threw clean, freezing cold water over myself <coughs> and my nephew as well. Freezing, very, very cold water. We were cold. No one cares. No one wrote us a letter and said, I hope it wasn't too cold. No. Ron is, Ron is shorter nephews, smaller nephews, 13 and 10, was it? Or something like that. I can't remember their ages. 14 and 12, something like that. They were only too happy to help with the freezing cold water poured over myself. And my nephew. Good morning, Jimmy. So that was our visitor last week, a surprise visitor last week. Prince Jimmy of Woodall. Will there be a surprise visitor this week? 
coming on her way later in the show today, boys and girls. We have Madonna appearing here on United Kingdom Talk. Barry Manilow is going to pop in for a cup of tea. Joan Collins and also Sir Richard Att- Oh, no, sorry, he's dead. He was due to come in today. But unfortunately, this wonderful, wonderful actor has now done. I like him. I liked him, didn't you, Richard Attenborough? Especially in Jurassic Park. I'm just trying to think how the music went for Jurassic Park. <coughs> Aren't they doing some experiments somewhere? They found an old egg or some old bacteria and they're trying to bring it back to life or something like that. Very, very strange. Ah, a message from Terry H. Terry H says, I don't even vote. Even Tories are jumping to UKIP now. Yes, they are. They are jumping to UKIP. It's a bit worrying, really. Um, Jimmy Butler says, uh, free holidays to Florida in business class. Thank you for all people that vote for politician Chris Reardon on KWT. I like the sound of that, Jimmy Butler. Free holidays to Florida. You know, the sad thing is, Jimmy, I'm very, very short of cash at the moment. Right. And BA have a sale on at this moment, lovey. They have a sale on, and I can't afford to buy the tickets. Very low on cash at the moment. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Now, and talking of holidays, now, isn't that funny? You've brought me onto our subject. Talking of holidays, do you remember <coughs> your first... You will, of course. Um, anyone else, do you remember your first holiday abroad? That first time you went to a country other than your own. Do you remember that? And where was it, boys and girls? Where was it? I want to know. I want to know. Send in an email if you're watching the recording, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or use the Skype. Skype in, boys and girls. Chris Reardon is my Skype name. Or phone in 020-8133-6358. Where was your first holiday abroad and how did it go mine was in 19 one moment please mental arithmetic is now taking place live on this show 1979 who wasn't born then terry h you weren't born then were you 1979 you just look like you were born way before that jimmy butler wasn't born then 1979 and I went to America. America. And I went with the Boy Scouts. Cubs, do your best. We will do our best, our gala. And we went to New York. And we went to Boston. 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 Those two parts of the holiday, uh, we stayed with families. And in Boston, I remember staying with someone called Mr. Fagerberg, I think, Fagerberger or something like that, I think his name was. And he was a lovely, lovely chap, a really, really nice man. And his wife, <coughs> and there were three of us, three English boys. I was a boy then. Oh, my God, I was 16 years old. Younger than you, Jimmy Butler. I was a, bo- a little, bo- not little boy. There's pictures somewhere. It's pictures. And well, let's let's go back a little bit further, shall we? Before, we, before I go on to that, uh, we went on Laker Airways. Now, Laker Airways was a cheap, it was, was possibly the world's first cheap, airlines other than because before that all we had was british airways there wasn't even virgin then all we had was british airways and they were quite expensive they still are expensive but you know you pay for what you get and laker airways and it was fine i remember being on that plane and so much excitement when i I don't remember being scared that the plane was about to take off i don't know why um can't remember who I sat next to really either and we arrived in America possibly New York I don't remember much about the airport 
but I do remember then from the airport getting on a Greyhound bus. And we drove to a place called Sabumak. Sabumak was like a camping thing. Now, when I say camping, I don't think we were in tents. It was like a scout um, scout resort sort of thing. And I remember the, the dining hall was one big, big shed type affair. And the food was all right. The food was all right. You know, it was typical scout things like baked beans and sausages and that sort of thing. And I made a couple of friends there. I, I remember the toilets. And I'll tell you I remember the toilets. In this particular place, I don't know if th this is an American thing or not, but the sit-down toilets were one room with lots of toilets in it, but there were no walls in between. So if you... Oh, it was awful. So if you wanted to go to the toilet, right, there could be someone sitting next to you having a conversation. Oh, no, dear. No. I couldn't use them. I'm so, I could not use those toilets. I had to. I, I used the staff one when people weren't looking. I would. I had to hold it. I had to hold it. I couldn't use those toilets. I had to use the staff one when they weren't looking. I just popped in the staff one and I, 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 and went there. There was literally must have been eight toilets next to each other, and it was just one room uh, with, with 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 you know holes in to sit on and, and do it. Oh no. Sabumak. I bet they haven't got that now. Oh, I can't be doing with that. And there was various activities outside that you could do, you know, swinging on a rope, that sort of thing. Sabumak. I think it was Sabumak. Let me have a quick look on here. Let's see if it's still here. Sabumak. Camp America. Don't even know how to spell that now. Ho ho! Here it is. Look at this. Blimey, I mean, that was quick. High adventure. Here we are. High adventure bases of the Boy Scouts of America. Um, Philmont, Florida. Now, where would it be? Oh, no, no, I can't find it now. Oh, there's, there's the other one. There's the other one I'm going to tell you about. So I can't find it now. <coughs> I thought that might be there. Northern Territory, Philmont, Florida. No, it was certain, certainly wasn't Florida. Summerland. Let's just go back one. Let's have another look there. Where is Sabumok? Ah, yes, that, that, that makes sense. Here it is. So Sibumuk, S-E-B-O-O-M-O-O-K, is situated in the region Maine in America. So there we are. So that's that's where we went first. We only stayed possibly one or two nights there, Sibumak. Um And then from and that was nice, you know. And that's where I made friends with a, a couple of people. <coughs> and. After that, we went to Maine, and I, I did. I've I've found something here about Maine. That was a very very large area, Maine. Beautiful place. It says here the Maine National High Adventure Area for Scouts was established in 1970. Um, it's on the north side of Matagamon Lake, and was called Maine. Matagamon National High Adventure Base. That's it. Yeah, that's it. The base operated as a single unit in 1971 and 72. An additional base was established at Pitts and Farm on Sabumac Lake in 1973. So there we are. Oh, Main National High Adventure was operated as a national base until 1991 when the National shut down the program. In 1993, the Matagamon base reopened as Maine High Adventure, an outdoor program run today by the Cadaxing Area Council. Oh, that's interesting. So they actually closed it down. But it was a wonderful, wonderful time. We did canoeing and we did walking. At the time I smoked. I was 16. We All, all the scouts seemed to smoke. 
and we did a lot of canoeing. And I, do you know, I can actually remember the smells now. They're coming to me now. You know how you sit there sometimes and, and, and a smell enters your head, although there is nothing to smell, if you see what I mean. That was a wonderful, wonderful time. The canoeing, I was really scared, actually. Scared of the canoeing, but it, it was all right. And I remember that particular summer was very, very hot and the lake dropped down. It was this massive lake and it dropped down quite a lot. And of course, before we did the canoeing, we had to have a little bit of a training course. So, and they were those like Indian canoes, open canoes. So you you don't go in like a, a little hole. They are like, you, you know the Indian, do you know the ones I mean? Indian canoes, they're open like that, big big and open. And you sit one behind each other. And I, I think there were two people in each canoe, possibly more. And we had to take it out into the lake and tip it over and get out. You know, to prove that we could do it in any inclement weather. So we did a 50 mile um, walking and hiking. And sorry, 50 mile hiking and walking, hiking and canoeing. And it was it was great. Now that I now that I, I think back at it, it's great. I've actually got an old Super 8 cine film of it somewhere. <clears throat> there was one particular day that the, we the the weather on the lake was... I mean, it's a huge, huge lake. The weather was really rough. I mean, really rough. And the old water was going like this, and we we had to, 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 to drop anchor... Not drop anchor, but we had to find land and get on there. We had a guide with us as well who carried one of those guns. And he also had this two-way radio, which for some reason I was fascinated... <clears throat> by this two-way radio. I'd never seen one before. And every night, he would have to call in to base to say that everything was OK. And he also had a gun with him because there were bears in the area, although we never came across one, just in case there were bears. I mean, they've got as much right as, as we have there, haven't we? And we had packets and packets of dried food. I'm trying to remember where the water came from now. Wouldn't it come from the lake? Would it, would it have come from the lake and then maybe been boiled? I don't know. Don't remember where the water came from. Or maybe they, they actually had... No, they wouldn't have had taps on these little bits of... There were lots of little islands everywhere and that's where we camped. They, they all had toilets, but they were like... Um, I don't think they flushed the toilets. So I, I can't remember how that worked. But now I think about it, what, what an amazing time we had. My favourite things to eat were blueberry muffins. So we got the mix for that and we'd build ovens. We'd build ovens, sort of you, you'd dig a hole and find some branches and set light to those and, and build ovens like that. It was beautiful just sitting by that lake. I'd love to do that again. <clears throat> now that I'm a bit older, I'd probably appreciate it more than I did then. It was quite an expensive holiday, actually for the time and I remember my mum and dad uh, they didn't have the money for this and my uncle uh, actually gave us the money for it Uncle Terry who's still around he's still around and he gave us um, uh, the money for it after we did the main National High Adventure thing uh, we then went and stayed with a couple of families <coughs> one was in Boston that was Mr Fagerberger I think I think some, some name Jan Fagerberger I remember his name very, very nice chap. He uh, was shortish and had... Was he tall or... Oh, I can't remember. No, I think it was tall and thin. And there were three of us English scouts that went with him. And he had a little family as well. And that was very nice. And he had a CB radio. Once again, I was fascinated by this CB radio. And I bought two two little ones in. They were only walkie-talkies. And they only sort of went down the end. But we didn't have anything like that in this country then. There were no walkie-talkies or CB radios. And I bought two of these CB radios home. Um, no, not CB radio, but walkie-talkies. And they, I think they only had one channel on them, you know. And he would take us out in the car. And we had a Chinese meal one night. Now... I did not really do foreign food. Even now, I rarely touch foreign food. It just doesn't do it for me at all. 
you know, but they had this big Chinese meal and I thought, oh God, well, I better eat it and not say anything. Because I wasn't, you know, I, 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 I couldn't say to them, oh no, I don't want any of that. No, you'd have to pretend that you liked it. I thought, well, I'll try it. So I did have this Chinese meal. And a little bit later we went to bed and I woke up during the night. I was as sick as anything. I remember that. <laughs> you know, some things they just don't agree with some people, innit? Didn't like the Chinese meal at all. But what a wonderful family. And then after after that, where else did we go? Took us to a couple of shops. Um, but did a bit of shopping. Um, had a picnic by by the river somewhere. And I remember his wife was lovely. She was tall, she had black hair, and just nice people, you know? And then after that, after that little thing, we then had a week in New York. And again, at this time we were separated, and I was on my own with another family. And they were nice, they were nice people. But for some reason it just didn't work as well. I, I, I don't know why. I've no idea why, but it just didn't work as well. It was OK, you know, no one started rowing or anything like that. I just didn't didn't feel comfortable for some reason with, with the other family. It's probably just one of those things. They were nice enough people, you know, wasn't <coughs> anything, wasn't mistreated or anything like that. I just just didn't didn't kind of click as well. Um, and I remember being in the bedroom one night and I shared the bedroom with their son and... Well, it was ever so... Because they had air conditioning. Now, that was a new thing. Air conditioning. Never seen it before. And I remember him getting up halfway through the night and turning the air conditioning off because he got really cold in there. And then we came back. Yeah, nice holiday. And that was my first ever foreign holiday. <coughs> Let's just do a couple of messages here. Good morning to Marge. Who woke up and forgot it was a Saturday. How can you forget it's a Saturday, dear? Set an alarm somewhere. Terry says, no, I was not born in 1979, 1982. Oh, you're not far off then, are you, Terry? You know, oh, I'm just looking on my Facebook. Yet another woman has just tried to friend me. They're a load of rubbish. So why people keep trying to friend me? I'm, I don't know who they are. Um... Who are these people? I don't know who they are. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, that, that was that was a really nice holiday. I have got some pictures somewhere. I'll see if I can dig them out or whatever. Mm. I never kept in contact with anyone. I think I rang Jan Fagerberg at some point and thanked him. And he was the only one I rang after... After the actual holiday, I never saw or heard from any of those people ever again. Uh, the, the people that I went with. Isn't that odd? On the other hand, it, it was the same for, at school. When I left school in... That was 79 as well. You know, I walked out of that school on the last day. Never ever saw or heard from anyone at that school again. Except for my friend Gary Manners. And... Mark Walker. That's it. Isn't that odd? Thousands and thousands of people, and you never hear from them again. I do try and make the effort <coughs> with old friends and that sort of thing. You know, making those phone calls all the time. Uh, although not, not in that case. Really, then, you didn't really ring people ring people up much it was quite expensive to use the telephones in in the 70s wasn't it so didn't really keep in contact with anyone which is a, a bit of a shame you know because now i'm like 51 and you think to yourself <clears throat> it would be nice now to relive the experiences that you had with like-minded people all those years ago you know sit down and have a chat or something like that uh, we've got a Skype in from Marge. Good morning, Marge. Hello. Can you hear me all fine? Yeah, you're fine, darling, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was just listening about you. Marge, I'm Marge, not... yes? Marge, that's a lovely picture of you on there. Is that a new one? Uh, I cannot lie. That's a little bit older. Than oh, is it? 
<laughs> it's probably about five years. <laughs> Add a few, a few wrinkles, maybe, you know. Oh, you've got lovely <laughs> hair. I didn't realise you had such nice hair. I have hair nearly halfway down my back. Oh, we, oh yes, okay. That's, a, that's the only thing I guess you call my beauty is my hair. All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like Lady Godiva, only, you know, I take a lot to cover this old body. <laughs> 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 oh, now you got me. De you always derail me. You're bad about that. I mean, get me off track. You know, I was talking about when you were talking about your vacation. It brought up memories of mine uh, when we went to uh, we went to Colorado and places. You know, well, we took a month when I was probably I see. I think I was eight years old. We traveled to Alaska by car. Oh, that's Texas. cold there, isn't it? Huh? It's cold there in Alaska, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> I, I six a smacky. I thought you said old. No, cold, <laughs> cold. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to get my microphone. Set, I mean, my headset works <laughs> so I can understand what you're saying. It's probably the way okay. I'm saying it. Okay. Uh, when I said I was eight, it was an eight. When I was eight years old, I thought you said it was when I was old. Anyway, <laughs> anyway cold. let me get back to myself. I, I haven't woke up this morning. My brain doesn't function firstly. Anyway, we drove from Texas to Alaska by car in a uh, 1968 Plymouth, um, what was that, Vol uh, Plymouth Fury, Plymouth Fury, if you know the car. That's a car, is it? No, I don't know that. I don't know that. Okay, know that. it's like a small, it's sort of like a mid-sized car, and it was my brother, and well, my cousin, which I thought my brother, Anyway, and my mother and my, my dad, we went to Alaska and uh, through Washington and all the states, you know. We got lost in Canada because we was trying to find some place. We asked for directions. And this man, he's real kind. This is back in 68, though. He said, oh, let me just take, just, let me get in. I'll just show you. He got, he got in the car with us, you know, and took us down to wherever we were looking for. I said, those days are over, you know. You don't just pick up a person and no, unless you know them. You know, it's kind of, well, I guess you take people around, but it, here you, now, you, I, you know. You do it then, but you wouldn't You wouldn't get in someone's car now, no. no. Uh, uh, so we finally, we didn't even get where we were going. We went to his house and visited with him for three hours, and I went out and played with his kids in the in the grass and i got chiggers you know what chiggers are no uh, the, if you ever get them you'll know what they are i got them all up in my private parts they're like teeny tiny i really don't know specifics but they itch like you cannot believe they are they ticks in. ticks well they're not like no they're not ticks they're tiny they're like micro i mean they're so tiny you can't see them but what are they, they called in. again chiggers how'd you spell that C H I G G G E R S. Oh, I love a look at those. Go uh, on, anybody go that's ever got chiggers, they know what I'm talking about. Because boy, they get they itch like you can't. Uh, that they don't itch. You itch. I mean, they make you want to scratch, and yeah. if you scratch, it makes it worse. But I that you know things like that. It seems like you remember pain more than anything when you look at your past. <laughs> but I was just remembering how nice these people were. Yeah. You know, I'm friendly yeah. and. They had mud martens under the house, you know. But the thing is, we drove through the Alaska Highway, I mean, from through Canada. Before it was actually paved, it was just gravel, hard, big, big huge rocks. And one of the uh, rocks busted a, a, bust a hole in our gas tank. Oh, wow, and, yeah. And it was a stream in gasoline. We went to a gas station. Now, this is a mystery. I've never heard of this stuff before. <clears throat> And never found it since, but this, this mechanic gave us a tube of stuff with the gasoline pouring out of the tank. My br my dad ladled this over that hole, and you believe it stopped it in five seconds? Oh, Completely really? Sealed it. I don't know what that was. Did you have to get I, under the car to do that? Just right at the back? Well, yeah. And and so we built a, my, br <clears throat> my dad built a screen for right. the rest of the trip to help c cover that tank because the rocks would bang, bang. But whatever that was, it, it sealed that gasoline hole. Ah. While it, I've, while I've, it heard, screamed, I've, heard I, I've heard people have used chewing gum to fix exhausts before. Yeah, but that, that, would, dis that would just fall apart with yeah, gasoline. Yeah. And I don't know what – I've never – I've talked to people here, you know, ask them about it. Unless I'm, I was a kid and didn't, you know, maybe I, met, you know, miss – Memory, memory on, on myself, you know, didn't remember it right. <coughs> but I said that was a miraculous conglomerate. <laughs> but anyway, it got us all the way to Alaska, and then we went to Alaska and I saw the salmon, you know, the the Alaskans. Yes. They, they take these little round, like a Ferris wheel looking thing with baskets, 
and it, it the water turns them and it takes up the salmon into the basket. Salmon. And my yeah. Sal- salmon. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, salmon. Big, yeah. They're about five foot long and they're kind of red and slick. But anyway, uh, one of the Alaskan men, he come over there and he's held it up beside me. And it was longer than I was, which I was eight <laughs> years old. About five. <laughs> you that know? big was a seven then? About five feet. Well, wow. I was eight, so that would make it about five feet long. I mean, it was huge. They're, and they were when they're spawning, they can't they can't bother them. Yeah, because they go upstream to have their you know babies. Yeah, they, eggs. They, they, they 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 jump up the water uh, upstream, don't yeah. they? Yeah, I've seen this on the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we came back through Colorado, we the Colorado River runs along the road, and then they've got a huge tunnel that you go through, real long tunnel. Yeah. And I, of course, as a kid, you love tunnels. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I don't know what it is about tunnels, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we pulled over because I think our, we was going to wash your car because it was so muddy, you know, wash off the windshield. And I seen this this the stream was kind of you know shallow, so my mother and I'm like this little brother he's probably four years younger but he's real skinny you know just a little old skinny yeah. thing and he's he's out there and that water was like off ice cubes it yes, was that yes, cold i, I mean it was, was so yeah. cold yeah. and uh, he was turning blue and shivering i said well get out of the water what are you doing and then here comes the salmon beside me was he trying to Big catch old- was he trying to catch him I did, I did. I thought, well, I, oh, the pretty salmon, you know, and I started going after it. And, of course, the water got deeper and deeper. Yeah. And it got, it was getting more and more powerful, you know. Yeah. And I grabbed, yeah. I grabbed the salmon, I reached around the salmon, and I picked it up. I held it. But, you know, they're slick. It's like a, it's like having one of those inner tubes with, with Vaseline around it. That's what it felt right. like. You know, slick and slimy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, look, Mommy, I got a salmon. I was about to drown. I said, Get she, Was it like, said, um... Was it like white water coming down the rocks? Yeah, it was. Well, it was clear, crystal. Clear. Yeah. Oh, and you talked oh, about. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. beautiful. You could see down to the to the the rocks and yeah. stuff. I mean, it was so beautiful. But I, like I said, it's like water off of ice cubes. And of course, I'd forgotten about the cold. I was I was so intensely interested in hugging the fish. You know? Yeah. And mom yeah. and mother yelling at me, leave the fish alone and getting it. I was being pushed a little bit by the the river was getting did, deep. You know, I'm here actually, about wait. Well, I'm actually, waist deep in this this rapid water, and Mama's scared. I was fixing to go down the river, you know. Did you <laughs> actually it, able to catch one? I caught it. That's what you I did said. Catch I, had one. My, I had it. I had it. Right. I wrapped around my arms around its belly, and I had it. It it, it went to the top of my head down to my feet. It was that big. <laughs> of course, it was so slick, you know, being slimy <coughs> and slick. Uh, it just kind of slid on down. Yeah. Of course, I finally yeah. I, I was getting a little concerned because my feet were starting to slip out from under me. Because of the water being so yeah, rushing, yeah, so fast. Yeah. and of course I was about to freeze to death, so I, I better get out of this water. But anyway, it was a grand adventure. I, uh, uh, you know, trying to catch that salmon. <laughs> but I'll tell, tell, tell you, it's beautiful. Then call if you ever go back to the states, Colorado is a beautiful place. Now the Yellowstone, uh, you know, of course. Um, oh, one night we were sleeping. Of course, we didn't. We didn't use uh, rest. Um, motels or hotels. We slept in our. It was a station wagon. Right. And course right. you got to think we're sleeping in a station wagon we we pumped up air mattresses and, and slept on those and one one night i, I kind of you know kids you wake up during night you got to go pee you know or something and i look out the side of the of the plymouth there and, and here's a huge nose looking in the wind it was a moose a moose a moose are they dangerous <laughs> or not they they can be if they're if they're in mating season. But right. I said, Mom, looky, there's a moose. And she said, Well, don't go out there yet. Let him go. <laughs> and I said, No, Mom, I won't go out tonight. I, I you know, in in, in the um, so you've been to the Yellowstone Park, have you? That's what I'm talking about. Yellowstone National Park in Colorado. Uh, uh-huh. And what 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 is in there to see, March? What what is there? Oh, trees and <laughs> animals. Yep. What well, animals? The, the, the moose. You've got to watch the bears. I mean, it's just natural, anything that would naturally be in it. Of course, like I said, the Colorado River and the mountains. Oh, it's just beautiful. A lot of Colorado mountains and uh, uh, crisp air, clean air. Now, this was 1968, so yes. it might have changed yeah. since I was little, yes. you know, yeah. Yeah. how humans Time Times change, yeah. Yeah, but they, they're trying to replace the wolves. The wolves are dying. I think they were dying out or something. I haven't read right. up on it lately. 
because uh, certain populations of deer and things are getting overpopulated. Plus, they had a massive fire, you know, like to destroy quite a bit of it. That's made me say, oh, the, the place that you ought to visit <laughs> is uh, Devil's Pot. What is it called? Uh, Devil's Pot. Devil's? <laughs> pot. Right, okay. Part, it, they're they're in, in, in Yellowstone. It's uh, underneath the ground. There's sulfur pits. Oh, I'll never forget that smell. Oh, it's, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I've been you to, know what yes, I know I know that smell. <coughs> I've been to St. Saint, Saint Lucia. I think it was St. Lucia. And they had that. We went to this place that is like a, and it was bubbling lava. Sulfur. And, yeah. Sulfur. Oh, it stank. And, I don't know. Awful. It's hard to even describe. I mean, you can't yeah. get that smell out of your Rotten nose. Rotten eggs. For, Rotten for, eggs. For, yeah. Rot eggs, you know. Sometimes I've been sick and I burped that smell. I said, "Ooh, I just oh, burped that smell." Oh Lord! Have you ever burped that smell? Oh no! You've never been that sick, I guess. <laughs> no. Yeah, the human body can put off a range of smells. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's, that was my memory from as a kid. You know, we traveled like it was a month. We went through through that all those state Washington and the apples and the. I remember the grapevines up on the on the staffs. You know, they had rows and rows and rows of grapes and and such. It was beautiful. Iowa. That's that's another state I love. The dirt is so black. You know, the soil and it's just it's just it's like buying that potted soil that you buy in the store. It's already kind of. Yeah. Compre- uh, yeah. De- Pete. Uh, de- Pete. Pete. Yeah. Pete. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. But all of Iowa was like that. And their cattle, of course, uh, back then we did eat beef, were corn fed, and you could cut it with a spoon. Right. Of course, that, like I said, I don't do that anymore. But anyway, uh, it was just uh, something to do with the soil and the conditions of oh, how they were. Oh, well, that's, 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 that's because uh, it was all natural. Then now it's all natural, mechanized yeah. and there's all sorts of blooming things injected into oh, them. Oh. It's just dreadful. Nothing's yeah, natural. Even if you eat meat, that's not just the animals, right? It's the pesticides. I mean, it's the it's the hormones they feed them. They feed them these uh, hormones to make them grow fast. They inject these cattle, you know, some of yeah. them with hormones. And then, of course, like even people that smoke, <clears throat> it's not so much the tobacco, but the pesticides they that's put right, on yeah. there too. Yeah, it's it's all these additives. And you ever notice our food? How many additives? It's just to color oh, it. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, th- it's it. funny you should mention that. <coughs> you remember that lolly I showed you a few weeks ago? The big lolly uh, that someone gave me? Uh, no, a lorry. What, it, uh, uh, lolly, lolly, uh, like a thing on a stick. Oh, lolly. I was got a lorry. Do you I remember that pink lolly. swell lolly? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I picked it up yesterday and I noticed on the back it said, um, this lolly may cause dysfunction in children and that sort of thing written on the back of it. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Due to the colouring. I thought, well, my God, good. why are you even selling this stuff? What's well, Freddy Krueger candy? I hand them out to kill the kids, you know? <laughs> 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 you know? I mean, some kind of child I, I gotta killer say, candy. <clears throat> i got to say, that sounds a pretty remarkable, wonderful holiday that you went on. Yeah, it was. It was quite enjoyable. Um, anyway, I just re- remembered all that. Of course, you remember a lot of things when you have a, a family member pass. You try to remember all the good times oh, you yes. had. Oh, yes. But my memory isn't that great, but I've got a lot of pictures of that, Doug. <laughs> my little brother, because you know how he is with, I don't know if you're siblings, but you, you laugh at them suffering sometimes. <laughs> oh, what, my sister? Oh, no. no, no I, 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 I like to... I mean, I like to constantly have little jokes with my sister. Yeah. Sometimes she just she doesn't get them. But Well, like when he's little, you know. You I would t- never I you would never want wish harm or unhappiness on No, no, on, on no. Your, it's just a, it's just a kid thing when you're a yeah. kid. Of course, like I said I grew up, I thought he was my <clears> brother all the time when I was a kid and then later on I found out he was my cousin that we adopted, but that don't matter, yeah. <laughs> you know. He's you still know, my half. You know <laughs> when when people go walking around like um Yellowstone do they have yeah. a gun with them in case the bears attack, or had, or do they have to have someone with them, or what? what how does that work? No, it's I, I. Well, of course, I don't. We did. My dad always carried a gun, you know, because yeah. we're traveling. It's just under the seat. I have a gun <clears throat> under my seat. I, I don't want to use it, but yeah. you know, it's there for my comfort. <laughs> okay. Because you, you but, never know if somebody's going to break in on you. And I said, I don't care if it is against the law. I'm, yeah, I'm going to get a gun. What if you were walking around Yellowstone? <laughs> 
just walking around and you didn't have a gun and a bear came towards you, what do you do? Well, they don't normally bother people unless they've got cubs or something or, right. you know, the, if, if there's that kind of bear, they'll have to shoot and kill them. But normally the, an animal will run from you mostly. Yeah. I mean, that's just a wild nature. Wolves especially, or they don't like to, to be around humans, so they're going to take off. I mean, if you okay. leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. You can stand there and look at them. But I, I, I've got to say, you know, I, I have to say, listening to you there and, and we have many conversations uh, over the last few years now, haven't we? And I like where you live. And you've told me before, you know, you can be sitting in your yard and raccoons just walk around and they're not bothered. And I just think no. it's wonderful the way you live. You live very simply, don't you? That you know. Well, if you respect respect people and respect animals, you usually get it back. And normally, if yeah. they're not sick. They don't have rabies, and you're not attacking. And that, nature's not that. Cr I mean, you're not their food. Yeah. You're not their. They're, you're not on their food chain. You know, yeah. it's just like people <clears throat> swim with sharks. Normally, sharks don't attack people. Yes. Really. I, you, yeah, I found that out in Norfolk Island. Um, uh, yeah. They have they have sharks there, and it was it was young people. You know, about thirteen, fourteen, um, that would come and talk to me because I was English, and they were from Norfolk Island. And I would say to them, I said, I want to go, is it all right to go in there? What about the sharks? Oh, there's always sharks in there. I said, oh, should I not go in there? Oh, no, they won't bother you. They're looking for something that's dead. You know, if they see you moving around, the, yeah. the particular type of shark that were in there, they said they're oh. not interested. They, they can't be bothered to kill something. Yeah. They, they're looking for something that's dead already. Well, nature you, has, I mean. <laughs> has its own way. I mean, of course, like I said, if it's something, it's just like people, you know, they could have some, they could have some issue that day. They could be sick or something happens, yeah. you know. I used to ride, I rode a horse and, and I was a member of a riding club for years, you know, and I'd have people walk up to my very nice, gentle mare, you know, and I'm yeah. sitting there. And they'll ask me, does she kick? I say, she's well, got horse. four legs. She's a horse. She's a, she might be kicking in the flies. She's got four legs. Or does she bite? No. You don't predict what an animal will do, but you know that she never has. She never has. But I'm not going <coughs> to stand sit there and say, no, she ain't going to do it because well, she could might, might be swatting at a fly. You yeah, know, I, I, I've never heard of anyone being bitten by a horse, to be honest. Oh, I have Again, been bit. Go, go yeah, and, some go of them are kind of cranky that way. They, don't, yeah. you know, they go got and, personality, too, just like people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to my sister, she loves horses. I think that's one of her dreams is to actually own a horse. But it's very, very expensive to do such oh, a thing. God, She'd love I to have a horse. I couldn't afford it now. We used to have a whole herd. <clears throat> we used to uh, train horses. I never liked the word break a horse. You don't break a horse. You train it. You yeah. know, I, I was I trained from the ground up. I did the long line, you know, and the and the and the driving and and sacking out where you make sure that they're not scared. And my horse that I had, she died. She's twenty four years old. She stood about fifteen forehands. Do you know what that means? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. At the shoulder, which is a little bit above my my. She was tall. She was thoroughbred quarter horse, and I trained her myself to ride. And I also trained her to, uh, I built my own cart, two-wheel two uh, cart, you know, like those hack, hack uh, what are they called? <laughs> it's been so long, I forgot what it's called. They're two wheels. I trained her myself, but I had her trained to lay down. I could lay across her, uh, you know, <coughs> and, and everything. But that was because of the training, not bra breaking, you break their spirit. You know, that people go out there with their spurs and their uh. whips. and You know, I said, treat something like you want to be treated. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't remember we were talking once many months ago about horses and um, I think I'm, you, I might have put a picture on look look how unhappy that horse is with that bit of metal in its mouth all the time. It's not nice, is it? And that bit of blooming well, metal I'll going... Well, I'll tell you the truth, that's not <clears throat> correct because some of the bit, they actually put, uh, they make their mouth water more and if they sit properly, they don't even know they're there. Right. They're, they're called, there's called a sweet water bit. Now, right. uh, it depends on the horse's <clears throat> sensitivity. It's just like you having a buildup of callus on your feet and walk around barefooted all the time. Right. You build up a callus. Yes. And if you're used to it, and plus if, it, if the bit makes their mouth water properly and, and, kick, and builds up that, well, sometimes they don't even, they don't, they won't feel that bit. They and don't even know it's there. 
you right. feel go with even more more aggressive. But uh, it depends on the horse again. Some of them you could put a string. I could put a string across my horse's nose and ride owned, her. Have you owned a horse, Marge? I just said I, I had one for twenty eight years in a riding club. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got a short term memory. <laughs> oh, oh, believe me, I have. <laughs> that's I, 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 like just, you. I just like to hear the I, way. I just you know, told you about my horse. I was in a riding club. <laughs> no, I, did, like, I didn't hear the bit that I heard you owned it. Uh, oh, I thought you said you just, you know, had it, not actually owned it outright, sort of thing. Oh, we, yeah, my sister, no. my sister would love one. I just love the way you live. You're very simple um, uh, way of living, well, you know, I'm, in the I'm trailer, good. and you don't worry about, you know, owning things. And and it sounds really nice and open where you are with little animals running around all over the place. And maybe those what are those tumbleweeds? I can imagine tumbleweeds blow past your <laughs> place. Do they? Once in a great while, I don't really like those they get hung up in my, my chain link <laughs> you ever try to dig those out but it sound it does sound better from your end if i didn't have to put up with a crazy ha- brother i would be <laughs> yeah <laughs> since my mom died he's went he's kind of gone mental and i'm dealing with him but oh, I, okay. he's just been stressed out you know i said but other than that you, you remind me i do have a nice yeah life, yeah, I guess. yeah. <laughs> if we didn't have to put up with people i think our life would be even perfect <laughs> i think you're right Marge, I'm going to have I mean, to go certain, now because we're running out of time here, my darling, all right? I appreciate you letting me gab. And, oh, it's I'm wonderful. wonderful always wonderful talking to you. Always and wonderful. I'll, and I'll set the clock for next time. I can't believe I got up thinking it was Friday. Never <laughs> mind. That's okay. You look after yourself, I'll, Marge. I'll watch the other half later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, my love. There we are, Marge in uh, Oklahoma, USA. And she's just wonderful talking to her. I just love the way she lives. She's not bothered about things, you know, owning things or anything. She lives very, very simply. And how lucky we are <coughs> to have someone like that who comes on and talks about, um, you know, their life. When I started doing these shows a while ago, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted people to write in and call in and tell us about their lives. Since Facebook, I think more and more people are using that now to tell us, you know, what they're doing. Sometimes it goes a little bit far. I've never been one to um, think that it's a good idea to put on your relationships and how that's going on Facebook. You know, oh, just split up with someone. He did this. He... No one wants to read that. I find it very interesting people talking about their lives and that's what I like to do on this show you know so if over the coming weeks perhaps you'd like to ring in and tell us how you live because we all live differently might be someone watching at the moment who goes out all the time gets drunk every night goes clubbing and then at the other end of the scale, you've got someone like Marge, who, who probably goes to bed. I don't know what time Marge goes to bed quite early, I would think, and lives very simply. She doesn't need all these things. It's just fascinating to hear how, how people live. Uh, good morning to <coughs> Daniel, who says, Hi, Chris, I'm a bit late. Yes, you are a bit late. We're nearly finished now, mate. About another two minutes to go, that's all. Thank you very much. Um... Good morning to Daniel. Morning, Daniel, who's in Ealing. He runs a nightclub in Ealing, uh, West 5. Who says, can you tell us when you're going to soak Ronnie, maybe next week live on your show? Well, we can't do that live because we're in the studio and everything will get wet. But I would like to give him a good soaking. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Um, good morning to Joyce. I think Joyce was with, is with us live as well this morning, aren't you, Joyce? And finally today, Angel's just written in again about her uh, video thing. Oh, by the way, Angel, um, I don't know if you want to... I'll, I'll send you a little Facebook message later. I'll send you a message later, OK? But um, if you can't get Skype working, you can call into the show. Not today, because we're going to finish now. I've got just a local London number, 020 number. All right, so perhaps you'd like to call in next week, Angel, and tell us all about yourself. We'd like to hear. We want to hear yourself. We want to hear about you. Angel says, on the subject of the videos, it's only on Facebook. She, Angel cannot see videos within Facebook. Does anyone know why that might be? She says, I've looked at the Facebook settings and they're okay. In only 
in one, as my email I sent you a copy of the picture of your garden, can you not show that? Well, I, yes, I can. I did. Where is it now? But it's, 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 see, I haven't got a colour printer. Well, I have, but I, I rarely use it because the ink's so dear. And, um, <coughs> picture of my garden in black and white there. And that's the way it sit down. Uh, that's the way it's set out. Basically, those of you that can't see, I've got like a couple of plants at the back, two in the middle, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six at the front there. And the, they're all arranged in difference of size. So thanks very much for that, Angel. Anyone know why she can't see videos on Facebook? Someone must know that. Okay, and perhaps I'll put a message on my Facebook um, to see if we can get that sorted out for you, Angel. All right. Now, I'll just... You know what I haven't... I've, oh, I've just looked up uh, Chiggers, Marge. Chiggers are uh, the the larvae form of a certain type of mite, and they're found commonly throughout the world in forests, grassy fields, gardens, parks, and in moist areas around lakes or rivers. So that makes sense. I just... I love where you live, Marge. It just sounds so nice and quiet there. We do like peace and quiet. Unfortunately, I, I don't get complete silence because <clears throat> the years I've been working with loud music I do have tinnitus um it's not too bad to be honest I'm one of the lucky people that can ignore it okay so although it's in my head now and it's very quiet in the studio I can ignore it and if I if 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 it does get too much I concentrate on something else which at the moment would be the fan going round on the computer. Now that sounds stupid, but if I concentrate on the fan going round on the computer, I can't hear the tinnitus anymore. In bed, it will be a ticking clock, as some people won't be able to sleep in a room with a ticking clock. But my hearing... <coughs> Ronnie's always going on that I've got bad hearing, and yet I can hear raindrops outside falling on, on my like, shed downstairs, because that's got a plastic roof. And it's if you drip, water drops on it, you, it is quite loud, really. Um, but the television, I've got this, I don't understand it. I've got this sound bar, a Samsung sound bar for the television to improve the sound. And I find it more difficult to hear that than I do the actual sound coming from the television. I don't know if that's something to do with the frequency or something like that. Anyone got any ideas on that one? Could let us know. Daniel says, can you do an another hour, please? No, I can't, Daniel. It's time to go. You know you've been forgiven, don't you, Daniel? Are you aware of that? Have you been watching the shows this week? You have actually been forgiven in this instance by the Manilow girls. OK, I just, just thought I'd mention that to you, mate. Just so you know. OK, all right. Anyway, boys and girls, uh, time to go now. Thank you very much for watching and uh, joining us today. If you'd like to send in an email for next week, it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I really would like people to start calling in now on a Saturday and telling us. Maybe, maybe I mean, Marge rang in because I mentioned holidays. Is that what I need? A, a little topic, perhaps, to call in? I have to think about how that would relate to your life. Um, what were your favourite TV programmes as a child? Something like that. I like to know how people live. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. All right. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye bye now. <laughs>